It is the judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. In January 1964, the Surgeon General published a comprehensive report linking cigarette smoke with cancer and other deadly diseases. Yet it would take decades before the public accepted the true dangers of smoking. Did you say I'll feel better smoking, Philip Morris? Yes, you will feel better. How did the tobacco companies manage to lie to the public in the face of all the scientific evidence? They realized that the science didn't need to be disproven. It was enough to create doubt in the minds of the public to keep them from recognizing the truth. Tens of thousands of doctors in all branches of medicine in all parts of the country were asked that question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. The cigarette company sought to reassure the public that their product wasn't dangerous. That is wonderful. Even though it was, and they knew it to be so at the time. The medical specialist stated that the ears, nose, throat, and accessory organs of all participating subjects examined by me were not adversely affected in the six months period by smoking the cigarettes provided. Where did this fake science come from? The tobacco industry funded private institutes and individuals to create phony science and disseminate it, creating the appearance there was a debate where there was none. Much of this phony science came from this man, Dr. Frederick Seitz, and the institute he co-founded, the Marshall Institute. Their principal strategy was to defend the products by insisting the science was unsettled, and therefore, it was premature for the government to act. The Marshall Institute used this same strategy to campaign against the dangers of acid rain, ozone depletion, and DDT. Used right, it is absolutely harmless to humans and animals. Then, in the 1990s, they began a new doubt and denial campaign that would prove more deadly than anything that had come before. This time, Seitz and the Marshall Institute were being funded by the petroleum industry. With funding from oil and gas companies, think tanks and front groups were formed. Their purpose was to raise questions about the reality of climate change and convince politicians and the media that the science was unsettled. The science is suggesting that maybe all of this isn't really happening or it's not really dangerous or it's not really man-made. Holes are being poked in the whole theory of global warming. Global warming is the biggest delusion of our lifetime. Man doesn't control his climate. God no, controls the climate. Come on. Evaluating propaganda isn't that simple. Recognizing the technique is one step. Another step is to know the purpose. Underlying it all is a simple concept. The public can't understand the complex science of climate change. So convince them that the scientists don't fully comprehend it yet either. And then persuade them that without sound science, it makes no sense to take preventative action. Please consider yourself to be under oath. Yeah. Let me begin my questioning on the matter of uh, whether or not nicotine is addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Carbon dioxide is not a harmful gas. And the more CO2 that's in the atmosphere, the better plants grow. There is a theological debate that this is a carbon-starved planet. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe that nicotine is not addictive. And that the Earth is actually cooling now. Turns out the planet may be cooling. Now, the globe hadn't warmed in the last decade. The science is wrong. The economics is wrong. None of the snake oil science stuff that is based on this global warming, gore gate stuff. There are a substantial number of scientists who have manipulated uh, data. Forget about all that global warming. I don't believe climate change is real. Do I believe scientists? No! I'm confused. How can you know what to believe when there's so much propaganda? The truth can only remain hidden for so long. In reality, there is no remaining reasonable doubt about man's influence on climate change. This time, it is not the lives of millions at stake, but billions. 
And I too believe that nicotine is not addictive.